I'm Don Dixon and I want to thank you for joining me again today. Uh, we're continuing our discussion on our new area of study, Mapping and Interpretation. In our earlier discussions, we talked about the reason that this is such an important area of study. And that is to eliminate all of the areas out there in your lake where there are no fish. Because as Buck used to say, you can't catch a fish if you're fishing where he ain't. And uh, no truer words were ever spoken. So we're trying to eliminate all of that non-productive stuff out there and arrive at the areas where the fish will be. I decided to go back to some elementary stuff this morning before I move forward. I don't want to think for one minute. Let's put it this way. I don't want to assume that you know these few things I'm going to tell you today. I want to make sure I cover it all and get it all right. Even if for a lot of you it's going to be elementary, I have to cover this so we can have a clean slate to really get started and before we get out there doing the detail mapping. Because if you don't understand the basics, detail mapping will be way too confusing for you. We got to understand that first, before we get on the water, general mapping and interpretation. We've got to be able to have that perfect in our minds, no doubt about what we're looking at, what we're looking for. So when we go out there, when we get to a spot, we know that spot we went to is a productive structure. And then we can get down to the detail maps and really pinpoint exactly where we're going to fish, where we're going to put our work. But first, we have to understand a few things. So I'm going to throw up a diagram for you today. And the reason I use this one is that it's sort of identical to so much of what, uh, what's out there today that you'll see in, in, you know, you go on Navionics, you'll see a bunch of stuff that looks just like this. We're looking for channels, the main channel. We're looking for uh, side feeder stream cut channels. We're looking for deep water. Secondarily, then we're looking for structure that's in relationship to that deep water. And thirdly, I talked about the importance of break lines. We had a long discussion about that. So this is what we're looking for when we look at this map that I'm showing you right now. That's the three main components. However, I'm going to take it a step further and pinpoint some spots on this map that we're looking at that you need to be aware of. And I'm going to tell you why. And we're going to start by noticing, of course, this main channel that runs through this reservoir. Sometimes it swings close to the bank over on the right side of the picture, and sometimes then it swings back over to the other side, and so on and so forth. This is how almost every map you ever look at is going to look like. There will be some narrow little highland reservoirs where the main channel pretty much goes right up to the center of the lake. But... In most of your maps, this is what it's going to look like. Keep in mind, one of our first keys we're looking for, deep water. All right? In a reservoir, that means channels, side channels, main channel. That's what it means. Okay? So as we look at this map, we're going to look at that. We're also going to look at the structure. Remember we said structure is the second thing we're looking for. But here's where I felt like maybe everybody doesn't understand this. I'm going to go back for a minute and, and touch on something that's very elementary in case you've forgotten or you hadn't heard it before. And I'm going to show a side view. And remember, last time we talked, I said we're going to be looking at most everything from the top view. But we have to mentally be able to transform that into a side view picture. Well, I'm going to show you this side view picture of a typical basic movement of fish, how they do it. Okay. As you can see, we got fish down here in the deepest water. Now, it could be 30, 35 feet in the summer. I told you their sanctuary zone average for a bass, 30, 35 feet. In the winter time, if this much water is available, that home area will be 60 feet. If you don't have 60 feet in your lake, it'll be as deep as they can go. Now, this is what's really important here. You've got to understand this as we start to interpret our map. Because we also have to interpret from a seasonal standpoint. So here's the deal. In the winter months, in the colder season, that's winter, that's pre-spawn. When we're looking when the water's still cold. 
Fish are in the deepest areas. And when they become active and have a short little activity period, normally they'll only have a short movement up and back down. And this will always, in the colder season, be occurring towards the steeper bank. You see on the right-hand side of our diagram, that steep bank. That's where you find the fish in the colder season. And these little activity periods, they don't last very long. They're short. Short movement, short period of time. But during the summer months, the bulk of the season, now we look over to the other side, the more gradually sloping and breaking side. That's where we have our summertime structures. So during the colder season, we're looking at the steeper banks. During the warmer season, we're looking at the, I hate to use the word, but we're looking for the flatter, more gradual sloping areas. That's the way the fish go in the summertime. This is the way they go in the wintertime. Steep banks. So, let's jump back to our little map that we're showing. Flatland Reservoir. And we see this channel swinging from one side to the other. If you'll notice, when the channel swings close into the shore, there's a bunch of bars, a bunch of little, there's a bunch of structures. But they're all very short and very steep. This would be important to you when you're interpreting, we're talking about largemouth bass now. This would be really important to you when you're interpreting the seasonal movements of the fish. This area over here on the right hand side where we have all the short bars and, and the channel swings close to the shore. And keep in mind, it's the outside of that old river bend. The outside of the bend. That's where you're going to have your deepest water and the shortest stuff, short structures. Then in the summer months, those fish will move to these more gradual sloping areas. In this case, we're going to demonstrate just where. And I'm going to start with all that being said. Now, this particular map doesn't have a lot of five foot interval uh, contour lines. It's in, in 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on. So a lot of the break lines that are going to exist in this particular lake we can't see on the map. But we can get an awful lot of information from this map and I'm going to run you through a few things. First, there's some areas marked, thanks to my wife she marked them up for you, with the letter A. Every place you see A, the letter A, these are washes. These are little sloughs. These are dead-end slots. And when Buck showed me the very first time how important they can be, I swear to you, I couldn't believe it. But one day, he gets me in a spot that appeared to me as just a little dead end. It's one of these little sloughs. The first time I saw one of those spots was Buck. Those fish had gone all the way back up to the head of that slot right to the where, where that wash peters totally peters out right there the whole school of fish was sitting right there and we limited out in 10 minutes 15 minutes max and i said buck what is that all about that doesn't lead anywhere it doesn't lead to the shallows it's not a migration route it's a dead end it stops there's, there's nothing there and then he began to teach me now before we move on I'm going to show you another picture. Make sure you get the reasoning behind this. Now, as you can see in this other diagram, uh, the channel swings in pretty close to the shore. So we know it's rather steep and deep. And then as you look on the flatter side of the channel, you'll see these washes or these dead end slots. You might say, why in the world would I, would I circle those little dead end washes? They don't lead anywhere. It just leads to a big flat. Why would I spend any time in those areas? Here's why. When fish are in a channel and they become active, they may move, they may move to these washes, to these dead end washes on a short movement. They didn't move very far and they didn't stay very long. Short movements. This can happen in the early season. It can also happen during bad weather condition in the summer months. Just a short movement of fish, and yet you're there because you decided to check it out. Keep in mind, when you find those fish in that wash, they had no intentions of moving to the shallows. They had no intentions of moving to the shallow shoreline features. If they had, 
those intentions, they would hit the end of the bar and gone up the brake line to the side feeder stream cut, heading towards the shoreline bar. But they had no intention of doing that. Just a short movement, back in that wash, maybe stay 10, 15 minutes, and it was all over and back down in the channel. Short movement, short period of time, short distance, everything was short. It was a short activity period. You have to check out those washes. You're going to get surprised. Don't pass them up. Even the most educated fishermen, sometimes they'll, they'll be aware of the importance and they'll hit the edges, the very ends or the entrances to those washes. They'll hit both sides of that, keep on moving on a troll. When the whole school of fish is all the way back up into the head of that thing. Or you could be anchored down and fan cast in the head of that slough and just limit out. So when you see these spots on your map, take a good hard look at all those spots where we've marked the letter A. Don't pass them up. you got to check them. Okay. Let's move on to, we're going back to our original map. But this time we put marked in with the letter B, we marked in all the bars. And again, thanks to my wife, Allie went and circled everything so you can see where all the bars are. Now, it's automatic that you can see the shorter bars or where the outside bend occurs and where you have the deep water swinging real close to shore. This is where you have the shorter bars. And from a seasonal standpoint, this is very important to you. Uh, remember when we talked about a bass. A bass will never go too far to spawn. He'll move from his summertime structure, from where he lives, he's got summertime structures this way, the colder season he's this way, but he's in the same general location. So in the pre-spawn, colder season, and then getting into the pre-spawn, he's on the steep banks. And he'll follow along that steep bank until he reaches that little short bar which is referred to by some people as secondary bars leading into these coves. And then as he progresses uh, more and more into the spawn as the water warms and gets to that spot where they're actually dropping the eggs, they'll be back in the, in the ends of these side feeder stream cuts. So being able to recognize these short bars and their importance from a seasonal standpoint, that's one thing. But then for the bulk of the season, we got to be looking that way. We got to be looking over this way. We got to be looking to the big, in this case, we're showing big, broad bar. Now, you might look at it and say, it looks flat to me. Well, it goes from 10 feet to 20, and from 20 to 30, and from 30 to the channel. Well, somewhere in there, I can promise you, there's some brake lines. This structure will produce. But that's where now we got to do detail map. But are we going to go there? Are we going to look for our fish there on this more gradual slope inside of this particular area of a flatland? Are we going to do some heavy duty work there? Absolutely. Especially in the summer months. All of these short little bars over here next to where the, where the channel goes across, swings in close and creates a whole bunch more bars. You notice where all of these little bars are, where the side feeder stream cuts are. Side feeder stream channels, the side channels, the main channel, these are keys as to where the migrations begin. They don't always go the same direction based on the season. But check out every one of those areas marked B. These are our structures. Here's where we got a detailed map, these structures, bulk of the season. All right, now we're going to show another picture, only this time we're showing, uh, we marked it with the letter H. There are two humps that exist. Now the one out there on the end of that big old bar, in sort of upper right center, it shows the depth on top is 20 feet. Now you might look at that and think, well, that's a dead end. Well, that's good thinking, and it could be, could very well be a dead end. But we would never know if that structure will produce anything or if that hump will produce until we do a detailed map. The question is, is that hump connected in such a way with that bar that the bar does in fact lead all the way to the shallows and it's connected with that hump so under bad weather conditions and at times we're going to have fish on that hump so we'd have to check it out now there's a possibility if there's some big flats involved in there and it doesn't reach a possibility that it's a dead end but i would definitely have to check out that hump now the other hump 
which is sort of down there in the left center uh, of your picture. You see, it's crowning at 10 feet on top. It leads to the shallows. By itself, it's, it's a productive structure, but it's right off the end of a bar. And keep in mind, that bar and that hump, as you can see, it's directly related to the main channel, number one. And number two, it's related to the, also to the side feeder stream cut. So we got two channels of water feeding this structure. And I can promise you, under good, good migration, that spot would be loaded with fish. Now, so as we look at this map, the idea is we can't just say, oh, there's a point, there's a point. Yeah. Where, if it's August, am I going to go fish all those little bars where that outside bend is? No. It's seasonal. I'm not fishing over there. I'm fishing over here on this big, flatter side, this more gradual sloping side. And I'm doing a detail map, getting all of the details of all of the breaks and the break lines that are on or connected to those structures. And something like that little hump with that little bar there, I mean, Leads all the way, period, boom. Yeah, that's a no-brainer. So as we break down that map a little bit, it's just a little section of a flatland reservoir. But it, it tells the story of the kind of things that we're looking for. When we see it, we've got to know what we're looking at. So as we run through that map, and you take a look at it, the first thing you notice is the deep water. You, you notice where your channel is. And then off of that, you're feeding off of that to find out where your short structures are, where your seasonal stuff is, where your secondary bars are, where the, where the uh, side feeder stream cuts are, where you're going to find your spawning fish during the spawn. And in the bulk of the season, you're going to see these big structures that need some detail work. This is just a very elementary seasonal movements, short side, short structures, deepest water, cold, dormant fish, short movements, summer months active fish, longer routes, uh, more gradual sloping stuff. And that's where the real detail needs to come in. So we can take that big broad structure and drill our finger in the water and say, there's my contact point, there's my fish. That's where they first hit it right there. And throw a cast and catch a fish. Man, nothing like it. So with all that being said, thanks for being with me today. And be sure to check us out on Instagram now and, and uh, follow us on Facebook. And please subscribe if you haven't already. We need you to subscribe to the channel so we can start getting that truth out there to more and more people. Thanks again for being with me and I'll see you the next time.